This is another episode of Flavor in Your Ear Podcast. Brand new flavor in your ear. A podcast about damn near any and every topic with no filter and zero regard for the easily offended. Everything you say upsets somebody. Please welcome the man behind the madness. The most important person with all due respect. Let's go! Your host and audio flavor maestro. My man. Marquise Edwards. What is going on, everyone out there? We are back with another episode of Flavor in Your Ear podcast. And as you all know, I love to find unique, special guests who can share their life stories, share what they've learned, um, you know, any roadblocks, any anything that anyone can learn from. We always promote that here on this show. And I found yet another one, of course. And I think you all will enjoy this episode. Um, I was in the green room with her, and she is currently in Israel, right? And when I spoke with her a little bit. I was like, oh man, you know, I speak Hebrew a little bit. And she's like, oh wow, you know, it's, it's cool. These are the type of things that I wish we had video to show you all, but I get to remember how the smile on her face was when I spoke Hebrew. So you all have to believe me with this one. So <laughs> her name is Limor Gross. And we're going to talk about a little bit about her journey um, in tech. And she knows a lot. So she knows a lot of different things that I feel can help specifically women out there, but others who may need a motivational tip. And uh, learn about some of her services that she can provide as well. So, Lee Moore, would you like to slightly introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, Marquise. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be at your podcast. Um, you. And yeah, you amazed me with your Hebrew. So, definitely, I was not <laughs> expecting that. <laughs> uh, so, hi, everyone. My name is Lee Moore. And my background is tech, very tech. <laughs> so, I started my career as a software engineer. Hmm. And I found along the way that I actually really like working with people, with clients, uh, and tend more towards leading stuff rather than actually diving very, very deep. Mm -hmm. And at some point in my career, I decided to make a shift and move into leadership. And I started leading uh, teams of engineers and and later grew into um, leading organizations. And along the way, I also moved to the U.S. with my family. We moved to the U.S. in December 2010 and lived there for nine years. We yeah. lived both in Colorado, in the yeah. Denver metro area, uh -huh. and then we moved to Plano, Texas, to north of Dallas. Okay. Yeah, two, and we two, moved back here two years ago. It's like two different weathers, Texas, Colorado. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and I know, I know. I wanted some heat. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted some heat after spending six and a half years in the snow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and when I got... Uh, so, I was always passionate about women okay. and women in the tech field because I am a woman in tech. I always worked predominantly with men mm -hmm. and it was not always easy for me. Mm. And some point along my career, I decided... I. I the passion grew and grew and I really wanted to hire more women mm -hmm. and to help women grow, excel mm -hmm. and get to the next level in their careers. And I also started mentoring um, women outside my, you know, immediate direct reports right. in other organizations. Mm -hmm. And that all led me to decide that I want to pursue that. But okay. what it actually meant, I wasn't sure. You didn't know. <laughs> I had no idea, actually. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, when we got back here to Israel, we decided to go come back here because my kids, I have four children. Okay. The oldest is finishing high school soon. She's in oh. 12th grade and she was back then. She was starting in high school and I said, okay, I have to figure out what am I doing because oh. otherwise... You know, life will just take us and we'll just stay in the U.S. Not that it's a bad thing, but we wanted to come back. Right. And then I said, it's a great opportunity moving back here because everything is like so many changes in life. Right. I might as well just change my career also. <laughs> that's a bold, <laughs> that's that's a bold into the mix. That's a bold move. That's not uh, always easy. <laughs> yeah, why not just throw another <laughs> change into the mix? <laughs> so I left my job mm -hmm. and decided to figure things out. Luckily for me, I was well connected in the US. I worked with a company called, and I still work with them, a company called Power to Fly, which is focused around diversity, equity, and inclusion. Okay. And I was working with them actually as a client when I worked at my last employer, DigitalOcean. And, and I 
kind of bonded with them, with their mission and their CEO, you know, and I connected and she offered me to work with them as a consultant. So that's how I started, basically. Cool. It was not planned, it just happened. And I started, I created a mentorship program for women and people from different underrepresented groups. And I still, you know, work with Part of Fly. I really enjoy what I do. And I also work with individuals, with women, uh, with women who need support in their career. I help them. Mm-hmm. So that's, man, that's actually a pretty cool story. Uh, you you dealt with a lot of different changes and to embrace change is sometimes not easy, right? I mean, you have adults that like to do some of the same things over and over again, and it takes a lot of courage to, you know, embrace something else. And you're doing it now, and she got like a bright smile on her face. I'm quite sure she loves what she's doing now. And we always say to do for work if you can you know do what you're passionate about or what makes you happy or you know what you have a calling for right so you spoke about you spoke about you know being in tech in a predominantly uh, male uh, a male you know surroundings right when in, in, in the job or whatnot so what were some of the struggles that you had early on trying to be a leader over, you know, I, I'm a man. I know men are like, Oh, what does she know? And she can't do what I do, you know, things like that. So uh, this, what are some of the struggles that you had to deal with early on? Um, you know, being a leader of, you know, this predominantly male, uh, area, right. What, what are some of the, your experiences? Yeah. So it's a great question. So first of all, I think, uh, is confidence, and mm. I see that over and over and over again with women I'm mentoring. Mm. So when I started managing, my first management position was after I delivered my second child. And I basically, when I was pregnant, I asked for, <laughs> for this opportunity. It's a long story, but never mind. I got it. <laughs> and I got back from maternity leave to lead a team of 25 software engineers. Most of them were men. Mm. It was my mm. first management position. And I was terrified. I felt I don't know what I'm doing and how those how those engineers are going to see me. Are they going to respect me? Mm-hmm. You know, what do they think about me? I felt very insecure. I think that was the first, the top one, the, the top challenge that I had. Mm-hmm. And secondly, I didn't know how to manage. <laughs> I didn't know what right. I'm doing, you know. Right. And mm-hmm. and that also is very common, by the way, not just for women, but for Basically, everyone, right? When you start Everybody. a new role, you don't always know mm-hmm. what what mm-hmm. you're supposed to do. So, when you were, you can see what type of person are you before you became a manager? Were you like quiet, hard? Were you like someone who didn't know how to take charge? You know, it's like things like that. So, I know a lot of people naturally, right? Naturally, some people just aren't assertive or, or aggressive, or you know, have to be that way. So, what are some of the characteristics that you had to? embrace right to be able to lead organizations yeah so first of all by nature i'm very introverted and i'm quiet Mm. Mm. and i think along the years as i as i had more confidence i started to Mm. i wouldn't say that i'm an extrovert but i i'm an introvert with a (laughs) growing introvert i don't know how to (laughs) put it like I, I, i just feel more comfortable putting myself out there than i used to I feel mm-hmm. more comfortable, you know, like, for example, in tech, there are a lot of tech conferences that you go to. Mm-hmm. And the big one was, for example, in the past Java one, like in San Francisco, you go to Moscone Center with tens of thousands of people. And that uh-huh. to me was terrifying, like just yeah. being in a surrounding of so many people and start yeah. to network and meet people you don't know. It's still uncomfortable to me. But I think this is something I grew, you know. As you do it more and more, the more you do it, the more you feel comfortable with it. Right, right. So I think leadership is not something necessarily you are born with. Yes, there are people that maybe it comes more naturally to them, Mm -hmm. but it's definitely an acquired skill. It just takes a a mindset. And even people who are introverted and shy and quiet Mm -hmm. actually can be a great, great leaders to be mm-hmm. honest with you, most of great leaders are not like big talkers. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah, yeah. That's, that's 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 interesting that you, that you said that one. And you spoke, you said mindset, right? And um, mindset is something 
with all my guests and that's why i feel great that i chose you to because everyone says mindset like mindset is i've spoken to people who have had addiction problems um people who have had rough upbringing people who have who had you know uh maybe from the gay or trans community they had different but they all said mindset is something which i'm trying to preach with these podcast episodes that your mindset can literally get you through a lot of different things if you change the way you think because a lot of times right and correct me if i'm wrong we are a victim of our own thinking right we're in our own head right and you don't believe you can do this and you know what if you didn't believe you know so i'm introverted i'm quiet i'll never be able to do this like you would have never tried you know you would have never persevered and been here today on this podcast so thank you for highlighting that part first of all and that's just another foot stomp out there to mindset changes so you uh I, I, when I was reading up about you, right, you, you were speaking about delegation versus doing things on your own, right? And I said, that's, that's the reason why I asked this question. I'm in the military, right? So I'm, and I've been in for a little while now, right? Mm-hmm. And one of the things that a lot of us at a mid tier level struggle with is delegation, right? Because we have troops under us and we have senior officials over us. And me, me included I have a problem with this right sometimes they say do something I just go do it myself or they say do 10 things I try to do all 10 things for myself and I have like 10 guys or get and gals with me so when you're speaking about delegation versus you know doing things on your own what are some of the things you could say about how you learned about delegation and what can you tell others about delegation yeah that's a great question um <laughs> <laughs> I think, first of all, uh, every time you, you grow, basically you grow uh, to to do something that you haven't done before. Like, for example, you're in a new position, you have a new rank in the military, like you're responsible for more people. There is a period of time that you need to shift. We talk again about minds. Shift the way you think. Because, mm-hmm. for example, I'll take for my word, uh when I used to be a software engineer or an individual contributor, I used to execute. This is what I did, right? I had to write code and deliver. Mm-hmm. When you're a manager, though, you're basically responsible for outputs of others. And you don't have to do everything yourself anymore. So it's always it's practice and balance between what are the top values you think you can provide? What are the mm-hmm. things that you do that provide the most value? Mm -hmm. And how can you focus on those versus things that you do and provide value, but others can do pretty much the same Mm -hmm. or sometimes even better, right? Sometimes, sometimes even as you grow into leadership positions, sometimes people that report to you can do some tasks better than you. Mm. And this is usually things that I challenge people I work with as they grow in their career to think about. Sometimes we just go over all the things that they do and I ask them, is this something that you, you feel like you provide a lot of value? Uh-huh. And if the question is yes, then do it. Then do the it. question is, I'm not so sure. Yeah, I provide value, but it's not like the best use of my time. Then maybe delegate that to someone else who can do it better than you. Mm. That is, uh, that's really, you know, that really like hits me because that's something that, uh, you you would be <laughs> surprisingly more about how many people struggle with that. Like that's yeah. a big struggle. And uh, whenever you have like me, right, when you have, have people in the middle and you got people telling you what to do and then you have a lot of people under you, that is very difficult. And I think it takes a lot of humility to say, hey, I can't maybe I have somebody to do this task better than me. Absolutely. And that's a part of knowing, you know, knowing your who's under you and knowing your team. Right. Um, So you know who to put in position to do the best work. Because at the end of the day, if they do it the best way, it's still going to make the whole team look good, right? It's going to make you look good too. So cool. That's that's some really good information there uh, about delegation, which I'm still still struggling with myself, but I'm trying. Uh, That's why I was a really good question for me to ask you. So you you, uh, also speaking about um, remote, working remotely, right? Mm -hmm. And with the pandemic and everything like that, um, of course, not just in the U.S., but a lot of countries have or, or companies are leading more to remote work. Right. And 
there are mixed feelings about remote work. Some people think that computers are taking over the human beings. Some people like the the work life balance. Some people, you know, that are super social, say they can't talk to people and things like that. So what are some of your thoughts on uh, remote work and how has it been good, good and bad for you? Yeah. So I'll share that I'm working completely remote since 2016 Hmm. and I love it. (laughs) <laughs> it fits my lifestyle. So I started working remote um, when I when I started working for DigitalOcean. And okay. I couldn't believe, <laughs> actually, I, did, I was not looking for a remote job. They, they reached out to me on LinkedIn. They offered me a position to manage a team of engineers completely remote. And I was like, is it even possible? <laughs> <laughs> but as I worked there, I, f- I found out it's definitely possible and it's great. Mm-hmm. And I love the lifestyle it, it allowed me. As a matter of four, you know, busy yeah. with school, homework and all that, it allowed me a lot of flexibility. Yeah. But it it's not that it fits everyone. I think mm-hmm. that, you know, if you ask me, definitely, I love it. I want to work remotely. It doesn't mean that I don't want to meet people in person, but I don't want to be forced to go into an mm-hmm. office. But I know, as you mentioned, as you also said, a lot of people, like the human interaction they need it they like to come to the office and sometimes even they need it in order to be productive some people need to disconnect from their home go to an office in order to separate between work and life and that's okay i think that that's okay too you need to find out what is good for you i think for the company's perspective the good thing about it that it expands the options to hire people. Mm. You're mm. no longer limited to hire only people that are that lives in proximity proximity to one of your offices. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, it creates a lot of challenges. When you hire people remote, you need to take an extra step mm. and be more thoughtful about how you onboard new people, how to make mm. people feel connect connected and a sense of belonging so you need to think about it you need to create onboarding processes you need to Mm. try other ways to connect people that in the office space is much easier right you eat lunch together you go for coffee or whatever Mm -hmm. when you're remote you need to find the opportunity to do that so it takes more effort and thought and that's that's something that i mean it's to each its own right um I would love to work remotely if I could, um, <laughs> I, because I still think there are ways to interact with people remotely. I mean, it's not just you're not in someone's touch space, but you think about this right now, right? This is a remote. Yeah. This is, this is you know this is awesome. I think uh, a few days ago I spoke to someone in New Zealand. I I'd never been to New Zealand before. You know, <laughs> you know it's just things like that. So I look at I try to look at the bright side on things like that. Um, and it's. it's I think it's the future uh, just because I think we all took the pandemic for a little bit of a, I'm going to say a joke, but we underestimated the pandemic and uh, we never know what can happen. So it's best to build on technology and how things are evolving and make the best of it. Cause even in a social environment and a job, it's not perfect, right? You still, some people are irritated by other people and some people are like, I can't wait to leave this office. So there's never going to be a perfect scenario, um, you know, interacting with other people. So, uh, that's pretty cool. So you spoke, you said something about when you found a job, you spoke about LinkedIn. Now I am, mm, I'm not the most pro at LinkedIn. I do have a LinkedIn. What is the power of LinkedIn and what tips and what tips can you give about having, first of all, do you recommend a link profile? Let's just say that <laughs> you, <laughs> do you recommend link? Cause some people, uh, you'd be, you'd be surprisingly more. Some people don't know what LinkedIn is. Everyone's just uh, Facebook, Instagram, and you know Twitter, uh, and that's not work related, right? But first of all, do you recommend a LinkedIn? And then, what are some of the things you learned about LinkedIn that you would like to share, you know, with others and how they can improve their LinkedIn if they have one, like me? So I absolutely recommend LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn. That's the number one social network, social media that I use. I use also Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, but LinkedIn is the top one I use and, I, and I'm there every day. Mm-hmm. LinkedIn is the, is the reason I found basically two jobs in the U.S. found me. 
and there was no chance I would find those jobs. It was looking myself. For example, this mm. job I was talking to you about with DigitalOcean, they reached out to me and the job description was actually, the, the job that itself was in New York City. If I was looking for a job, I would probably would look, back then I lived in Denver, I would probably look in Denver. I would not look. Mm-hmm. In, in, so the, the, the nice thing about it is that they found me and mm-hmm. I got opportunities I haven't even thought Mm-hmm. possible for me and mm-hmm. uh, it is an excellent network for employees for people who work like as an employees for consultants for business owners for companies for everyone i highly highly recommend it so i think i mean giving tips it's hard depending what you're trying to get out of it but let's say you're trying to get a job out of it let's let's say you're okay. working and you and you just so even if you're not looking for a job I mm-hmm. highly recommend you to create a profile and make mm-hmm. sure you put your picture uh, and a background mm-hmm. picture. Uh, basically, you fill your profile with all the information possible. Mm-hmm. And you stay active. You stay active. You share some some interesting articles that you read. You don't have even to post anything yourself. You can just comment on what other people are saying. You can mm-hmm. share things. The more you are engaged in the platform, Mm-hmm. the more likely people are going to find mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. So that engagement uh, is key with LinkedIn. And so, like you said, everyone doesn't have to be looking for a job. So how often do you think someone should update their LinkedIn? Just so say like me, right? I'm in the military for the next what, three or four years, right? But I still have a LinkedIn profile. So do you recommend, I mean, whatever accomplishments and things like that, that you have, that should you update them? periodically or should you wait until you're looking for a job to update them i definitely don't think you should wait wait uh, f- looking for a job you should constantly keep it up to date you should mm-hmm. update the profile whenever you feel like you made a significant step forward whether mm-hmm. you got promoted or you know you just made a, a significant achievement you feel should be mentioned and you really hit the nail on its head achievements and this mm-hmm. is what a lot of people miss a lot of people just say, oh, my role is X, Y, Z. I'm responsible for this and this and this. Instead of focusing on what they, of their contributions, of what they did, what they contributed, what have they achieved. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. that's the most important thing to highlight. Right. So that's, and I speak about it so casually just because, you know, well, you don't know, but the military, you know, they kind of make us, oh, write down everything you did. You know, you have to capture everything you did, capture every, everything you did, because we use these things, you know, to make awards or decorations or things like that. Right. So the average person, you know, maybe sometimes they don't, you know, they don't do that. They don't see the significance in every cause every little thing you do. It can add up to something big. Right. If you get one certification or one you know, recognition and when you got five, it looks like, oh, five recognitions. You no, know? So I think that's a really key pointer there to always keep it updated. So everybody out there listening, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, uh, like Nimor said, just, you don't have to be you know, the ready to get a job or anything like that, but make one and get familiar with the LinkedIn profile and the LinkedIn platform because you never know opportunities can come to you. As you all can see, she says she got a job and she's in Israel and she works remotely and the job was advertised in New York. That's not the perfect story of, you know, how to get engaged and finding, you know, so someone finding her, you know, someone. So as she had no LinkedIn profile, she wouldn't be in the position that she's in today. So I think that's an awesome, outstanding story. Um, so be more about back to about the to remote working. Right. So, OK, you said you like it. Um, you said that, you know, uh, you see the benefits to it. You can manage your time. But how do you deal with problems when you have remote working? Because what if someone just logs off and just doesn't engage with you like how how are some of the ways you deal with you know employees and you know when there's a problem like what's how's that experience because we know that i know that it exists right it has sometimes this somebody's not meeting standards and you're like miles and miles away or they just you know how does that affect the team and what's some of the challenges you deal with there yeah i'll tell you something um i think that if someone have performance issues it doesn't matter if they're in the office or not in the office. If someone has motivation issues, it doesn't matter if they're in the office or not. And mm-hmm. in one of my jobs, I used to commute 50 miles back and forth every single day. And mm-hmm. my manager insisted that I will come. It was before DigitalOcean. And my manager mm-hmm. insisted that I will be in the office every day to supervise the people. I don't believe in this. 
And if I have someone who doesn't perform, and it doesn't matter if they're in the office or remote, mm -hmm. then it means I have to, t to talk with them mm -hmm. and share what I'm seeing mm -hmm. and help them improve and, or understand what is the problem. I'll give you just an example, not even performance issue. I used to have an employee who mm -hmm. never showed up. You know, we, we use some tools, right? Because you work mm -hmm. remote, we use tools. Mm -hmm. Slack, I don't know if you heard about the tool Slack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like one of the tools you cannot live without when you when you work remote. And uh, and for those who don't know, it's like a messaging, so more sophisticated than just a messenger, but never mind, for, for that matter. <laughs> and mm -hmm. he, he never... He was never responding or active in Slack before, I don't know, 11 a.m. Eastern or whatever. And I was mm. like, it, it drove everyone crazy. Where is this person? Why why is not there? And what I did, I just reached out to him. And I said, hey, I want to talk to you. And I asked him, I said, I never see you online before, like, I don't know, 11 or so. Mm. And it mm -hmm. bothers me and people. I mean, what's going on? Like, I asked it nicely, not in a way that right. I'm accusing right. And he said, you know what? I am really most efficient between 11 to like 8 p.m. That's like my, and I sometimes I even work during the night. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. And what I did is we set expectations both between me and him as his mm -hmm. manager and also with the team that mm -hmm. this person, he likes to work within those hours. And I said, as long as you make sure that you have a time frame that you are available when the team, the rest of the team is working and that you show up to important meetings. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. As I think it's about matching expectations. So when everyone mm -hmm. knew that that's the way he is, so mm -hmm. they expected that he will not show up before 11. They mm -hmm. set the meetings accordingly. And if there was a need, he came to an earlier meeting, but, and it just worked. Wow, that's well. That takes a lot of patience, and understanding because <laughs> we know that story could have went one or two ways, right? Yeah. You been like, um, no. <laughs> you could have been like, um, no. So uh, it takes a lot of compassion on your end. I'm glad that it worked out that way. Uh, this is to show that, like I said, I'm back on this word again, that your mindset and way you approach things sometimes brings out different results because the more could have went a different way and. Who's to say which way is right or wrong when you, you know you're dealing with personal employees and stuff like that? She could have, because I'm in the military, right? And I, I, I hate I keep saying that because you make me think about it sometimes. When we get told to do something, there is no options, right? It's like yeah. show up, show up at seven. I hate waking up at seven, but I gotta show up at seven, right? So like, um, or I have to work out at six in the morning. I like working out in the afternoon. So uh, it's just a lot of different things that I feel like that the remote being in a remote job gives you the flexibility like you said earlier right that gives a lot of tips and a lot of people out there listening i'm hoping that you can get that out of this that when you're trying to find a passion in a career and you're trying to get into something don't always shut something down because of the shortcomings that you may think about it think about the the pros and the cons of both right because yeah. there's nowhere there are not a lot of places in the world where you say i'm i'm more effective at this time and they say you know what Okay, <laughs> that's just not real. Like in a corporate world, right? Like using an office, and you say, "Oh, everybody comes at seven. I want to come in at 10. You don't get that flexibility. Now we're working remotely, right? Yeah, that's that's kind of a different tone right there. So that's a big plus, I feel like, in uh, working remotely as well. So, yes, I more. just yeah, I just <laughs> want to mention that you need to make sure that people are you know delivering what they should, right? I mean, it doesn't mean oh, yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, you still. I, I get what you. I, I I think I got what you were saying. You were just saying that. Hey, you know, you still fulfill your role, you know, so you still have yeah. an expectation, right? If you say you have 10 things to do, right? And because you are being flexible and working with that person, they still have to do their 10 things to the best of their ability, right? They don't get exactly. a you, you don't get a shortcut or a pass. I, I I I got what you were saying, but thank you for clarifying that part. He's like, I didn't say, oh, just do what you want to do. So yeah, I get that, I get that part. Um, so um as a as a woman, right? Um and we don't make anything like super like gender based or anything like that, but I know that the story of a woman sometimes is more difficult than what men go through, even though we all have our same, our different struggles and things like that. So to our audience of women out there, right? Um, if you can give a message to them as far as what you've learned, what you can tell them, you know, at, at this point in their lives, young, could be older, you know, about 
your experience that you can share with them and say, these are some things that you feel like you've learned that they can benefit from? I think, first of all, I learned to be less sensitive. Mm. Mm. And instead of uh, taking things personally, try to look at it in a different way. Try mm. to see what you learn from it. If something bothers you, just say it. I, I see a lot of a lot of times what happens, and it, by the way, it doesn't happen if because any anyone is doing something mean. It just sometimes it's a different between how people communicate. So, and it's <laughs> very generalized. But men sometimes mm. tend to be more direct. They have more ego. You know, they may say yeah. things, and women may take it personally. And women mm-hmm. are sometimes more sensitive, and they take it more to mm-hmm. heart. Mm-hmm. Try to take it less personally. If someone something bothers you, just say it bothers you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So don't don't take it too much to the heart. And that's that's a huge one. Um, a lot of people, and my men and women, right? They they uh, respond with emotion, and sometimes. It's Good to be respond with emotion, but sometimes it's not good to it's not good to respond with emotion because uh, you you get blinded sometimes when you kind of get defensive with emotion. And uh, what I feel like you were saying, uh, in other words, you were saying like just reflect on yourself. You know, kind of just you know, if you look at things differently and like don't you said don't be so sensitive. You kind of think because it's kind of sometimes that me against the world mentality. Now there are some people you know that are pretty aggressive, <laughs> and, you know, and things like that. But that doesn't, that's not everybody. Like, it's not a general statement. So, you know, if you react to everything and everyone, you'll just be fighting battles, you know, with 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 everything, right? So, cool. <laughs> My, uh, we're winding down. So, we, I got one more business-related question for you, then I'm going to have a little bit of fun. So, that's always how we end the episode, mm-hmm. just so you know. So, my last question for you, what is your... What's your biggest dream for your entrepreneurial journey? To impact as many women as I can and to help mm. as many women as I can get to executive mm. roles. Mm. That's a, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. And uh, I feel like a lot of, I feel like you had a lot of self growth through the process. Right. And one thing that I do commend is I commend someone who goes through experiences goes this and say, you know what? I'm going to help others. I'm going to bring others, you know, up with me. That's why I love, I love doing this because of that. Right. Because I'm someone I'm not there yet, but I said, I can talk to other people who are not there yet either, but they want to help others come up. Right. It's a big world. We live in, we live in 6 billion people plus in the world. So us being able to help each other in any way, I, I, like I said, this all the time. We have a very, uh, different amount of listeners all the time. We can reach out to one person with this episode that might get motivated and say, all right, you know what? Lee more motivated me. Let her help me or, you know, reach out. I feel like that's a win, right? Cause one person whose mindset changed, who we planted the seed for someone, you know, uh, to, to make better and to, and to make changes because life is about learning and why not learn from someone else's experiences? Right. I mean, that's, Absolutely. That's I feel. <laughs> so, okay. Enough with all of the, Tense stuff. So I have an app here that I use as we close, right? Uh, I have an app here that I use, and it's based. This is fun. Um, it's from uh, a guy I named named Travis who makes this. What, what do I call it? He makes this. Uh, it's called Pod Decks, right? So it's it's this fun questions to ask, and I always ask my my guests three of these three of these questions, just you know, just to know this is. Totally unrelated to what we've been talking about. Okay, it's just cool. It's just, it's just for fun, uh, and I ask these questions to you, and it's no, it's like it's low threat, but it's just to get you know, what you think. So this is the would you rather? Have you heard of would you rather before? Yeah. So he's telling you, pick, you're gonna pick one, and you're gonna tell me why, and I'm gonna laugh, or I'm gonna be like, oh wow. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your first would you rather is from roll. Would you rather have a famous parent or a famous significant other? Uh, <laughs> She's like, I don't know. A famous and rich significant other. 
why, why, why do you, why do you choose, why do you choose the significant other over the parents? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't mind both, by the way, but. He said, okay, so she said either, either, either or. So I think significant other two, uh, because I feel like if I have a significant other, because if you have a significant other, right, your money is kind, kind of their money. I hope, I hope, and you can help your parents too. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's true. So you, st- you, you, know, you still, so you still can. So uh, I, I like that answer too. So the next one is: uh, Would you rather eat only salty food or only sweet food for one month straight? Only salty food, I would say. I love sweets, but I cannot just. <laughs> He told the long sweets. Oh, <laughs> I don't know because both of those I'm like, gonna be diabetes or high blood pressure. <laughs> so I'm, the, the next months I'm yeah. never gonna uh, I'm, I'm never gonna eat salt for a long time. So again. for one month you eat salty, and for one month you eat sweet <laughs> <laughs> to balance things out. Oh man! Okay, and our last question here is: Oh man, would you rather? Cross a river full of crocodiles or a river full of piranhas. Mm. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know. If, I don't even know which, one's good, which one is good on that one. I don't know. I would choose the piranhas. I don't know why, but crocodiles. Shit out of me. I mean, I, I wouldn't want. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually don't even know which one is worse, but. Maybe in hopes I can slap the fish away and maybe actually, live. Actually, you know, a uh, fun story. Uh, we took a boat trip in mm-hmm. Louisiana, mm-hmm. Uh, and it was full of... Cro- Basically, you go there to watch crocodiles. Mm. <laughs> it looks like a horror movie. Like, everything is quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and you wait for a crocodile to show up. I was terrified the whole, the whole ro- you know, the whole time. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, I, yeah. I'm, <laughs> crocodiles just—they just so big. <laughs> They're so yeah. big. And, and if I was on land, I may have felt like I can outrun them or hide somewhere. But when you're in water, you are at their mercy. Yeah, <laughs> that's absolutely. That, that's that's how it is. So that was fun just to get you know your outlook on that. I'm glad it made you smile and laugh a little bit. So uh, as we wrap up here, uh, Limora, how can I'm, I'm quite sure LinkedIn, of course. Um, if anyone would like to further you know, reach out to you. Um, you know, communicate with you or anything like that. This is your time to uh, say your closing words, how you felt about today's interview and how, you know, how folks can find you on social media and things like that. So I had a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Marquis, for having me. <laughs> and for the audience, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn at Limor Bergman mm-hmm. on LinkedIn and also LimorBergman.com. I'm just launching an updated website pretty soon. Oh, so sweet. by the time your episode yeah. will be out, it's probably yeah. be live so you can go to the, my Good. website yeah cool so also everyone we will have uh because i will be communicating with her before the episode is released so i'll have the links to everything in our show notes when the episode is released so you all can go find her so linkedin i think this was a great uh, conversation i feel like it was fun but it was also very important um a lot of important uh information that was given there that can help others especially women right and um we don't we're not catering to any audience i feel like the information we have is genderless of course but she is a woman and this is her experience as a woman so i feel like she can help other women as well so and you heard her calling that she wants to do that as well so that's that's super cool so before i let you go Limora, i will have to say this because i'm not gonna let you go i don't know when i'm gonna get another guest from israel so you have to talk a little speak a little hebrew to me and i'm gonna try to speak it back i might embarrass myself if i don't understand what you're saying but i'm gonna try it because that's that's what makes this fun so She's okay. Gonna, she, she's gonna try it, y'all. So y'all, it's the first time y'all might hear this. So I'm gonna try to brush off my memory and see if I can respond to her. תודה רבה מרקיז על הראיון היום. מאוד מאוד נאנתי לדבר איתך, ואני מקווה שנתראה בקרוב בישראל. Ooh, okay, so now, so I'm trying. Trans- I'm gonna try to translate. Okay, I'm trying to translate. She said, "Thank you, Marquise, for having me today." And you said, "You hope that you see me in Israel." Is it in the future? Yeah, Thank yeah. You. Yeah, like pretty that. good. Impressive. <laughs> I, I was trying to, uh, that was on the spot you all, by the, by the way. So. <laughs> Very but, impressive. Hey. <laughs> so, hey, that was that was, was a great time, Limor. I thank you for um, sacrificing your time and giving your time. Everybody's time is precious to me. Um, 
thank you for being a guest i will keep you in my network circle uh, for future opportunities and things like that and i will always shout you out so all, everybody out there also listening please follow flaving your ear podcast on facebook flaving your ear podcast on instagram and we have a website as well which will also be in the show notes we thank you all from all parts of the world that are listening whether it be good morning good afternoon or good evening this is flaving your ear podcast marquise and lee moore we enjoyed you all's ears and we'll catch you all on the next one have a good one bye and peace bye <laughs>